Wow, kia ora and welcome back. No mai, Heidi mai, wherever you are and watching this vlog. Hope you guys are doing well. Hope you had a great weekend. We are at video number 43, 43, which is just sensational. And we're coming in hot and we're coming in live from Australia with our next fellow classmate and old boy of St. Pat's Silver during 1989 to 93. Now, the next fellow was an upper hut boy. I uh, got to know him very well. He came to us from St. Joseph's. We had a lot of St. Joe's boys come to us uh, from uh, to stream, which was quite natural, being a feeder school, um, coming through the Catholic system through to Silver Stream. He had a younger brother who I think was the same age as my younger brother, uh, his brother, um, Matt. Um, and, you know, this guy was just an all-round good guy, always had a big beaming smile on his on his face and I know he's gone on to do some pretty cool things in his life so you'd be really keen to hear from him so can I say a massive kia ora and welcome to Situ Inaleo. Kia ora brother. Kia ora huge malo. Hello to everyone. Wow lovely to see you Sit, you're looking wonderful my friend how are you? Yeah I'm good thanks and wonderful to see you as well and, and everyone that's posted videos and photos as well it's good to see uh, all your faces. Awesome. See, I know um, we've been doing a little bit of communicating and, and you've been keeping a, watching the videos and, and sort of keeping in tune with, with what's been happening and the rest of the guys. What, what have your thoughts been of, of the video so far and, and sort of hearing everyone's stories? What, what have you, what do you think? Oh, look, no, nobody's changed really. Um, um, you know, I've absolutely loved the videos. I've loved catching up with um, what everyone's been um, up to. Um, Few emotional videos there um, with old McBurn and um, good to see all the old St. Joe's boys as well, but also the Lower Hutt Day boys. I was a pretty proud day boy, so the more day boys that get out there and do their videos, um, you know, the, the happier I'll be and the bigger the smile will be. So keep well, up, boys. Well said, mate, to um, well said, ripping the, um, the day boys. And we sort of touched on this, but there was quite a divide it, I, certainly in the beginning um, of our years, you know, when you had firmly borders and pretty much firmly day boys, but towards maybe the mid and then towards our maybe uh, sixth form, the, we soon, we came together. We came together quite nicely. But at the beginning, it, it, there was a bit of a divide, wasn't there? Yeah, I think there was definitely a, a, a feeling out period um, between um, those who were local and those who weren't local. Um, and those who weren't local who were boarding, they seemed to run the roost. So I think as a day boy, we kind of like wanted to stamp our mark on our territory, being um, Silver Stream, being the Hutt Valley, whether you're from Upper Hutt or Lower Hutt. But yeah, you're definitely right. As the years gone by, it was all about the blue and white, really. It was just stream all the way. So, and that probably happened, I felt like it happened pretty early, um, maybe mid fourth form, that everyone just started being all about the blue and white. So, nice. Yeah, we did. We did mould pretty well our our year. Yeah, we definitely did. Now, before I ask you some questions, I uh, just want to acknowledge um, now um, for those who don't know, uh, Situ served our country in the uh, army, um, many uh, operations and, and deployments. He he did uh, twelve years with us, mate. So I know you'll talk a little bit about that as part of your life, but I just want to thank you for your service, and um, you know, and it was a terrific um, service that you gave New Zealand. Yeah, not a problem at all. Thanks for that. You it paid the bills, um, and I know a few of the um, a few of the stream boys have um, gone on. I know Ian Peters um, is in the Air Force or was in the Air Force. I'm not quite sure, but um, I actually served in the artillery with Alan Kinsella, um, so he was um, one of my majors coming through um, 16th Field Regiment, and he's gone on. Uh, he he was um, I think he was seventh form. When we came in in third form, so. he certainly was. Uh, Alan was uh, Keg's brother. Uh, Paul, yeah, Paul right. was his, his younger yeah. brother. Wow, yeah. that's, just, that's wonderful. Well, see, let, let, let's kick into it. So, um, I'll let you tell the story. So, take us back to when you first began at St. Pat's. Um, of course, that was 1989. So, what brought you to uh, Silver Stream? How many years did you end up doing? And touch base on your first day. Oh yeah, like like most of us, Mum and Dad had made that decision for us. Um, obviously, being a St. Joe's boy, I was always going to follow the footsteps of um, of everyone else that had come through um, St. Joe's, and it was probably under the guidance of the parish as well, um, along with the um, St. Brendan's uh, crowd. So 
first day, I, I remember rocking up. Um, you know, we were all told to meet at the station. We all met at the station. Most of us had caught the train and uh, from Upper Hutt and Wallace Hall Station. And I remember um, standing on the front doorsteps of the old building. And I think it was Nick Einan was our prefect. He came and uh, grabbed a few of us and then took us for our um, first day. Um, other than that, I don't really remember the first few months of school. It's all um, little spots here and there where my locker was up in the new building, um, you know, the classrooms that I was in. Um, yeah, so the, the uniform was oversized on most of the boys. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, that was um, that's how I came through, through, through the St. Joe's. And, um, <clears throat> and I, I really didn't want to go to St. Pat's. Most of my family were at St. Um, Bernard's in Lao Hutt, um, being a Tokelau boy. Um, so, yeah, I was, I was a little bit glassy-eyed, I guess. Um, possum and uh, possum and deer lights when I first come to stream. Most definitely, as as we all were. Um, now, you did what year did you leave um, Silver Stream, and what did you do the first year after you left? Oh, so I left Stream in '92. I left Stream. Um, so halfway through sixth form, my um, I was another one of those that was asked to leave Stream. Um, so I, I remember it quite well. I remember the um, first 15 trials. Um, a lot of you probably don't remember my rugby days at Stream because I, I played rugby league for the Upper Hutt Tigers. Um, I played alongside Campbell Clark. Uh, the two of us went off and sort of made our own path wanting to be Balmain Tigers or Canberra Raiders. And rugby league back then, you know, late 80s, early 90s was massive um, over in Oz. So... We, we just sort of followed our uh, Upper Hutt community, the crowd that we hung out with and, and went to rugby league. So when I missed the first 15 trials, um, I was asked why. Um, I had actually got a letter from my coach and, and forged a letter from my parents, which I took into school. And um, and then I got a, a kind, um, please explain. Mum and dad, uh, well, mum took me into school and uh, they said, you know, you're either going to play a winter sport, which is mandatory, or, you know, if you want to continue to play rugby league, you can go and play somewhere else. So I did. I left halfway through sixth form and went to Upper Hutt College. I uh, did half a year there, and then I didn't return back to school after that. I became a postie. Um, was working the post for a little bit. So let, really me just, let, me just, let me just stop you there. <laughs> yeah. Sorry to interrupt, but yeah, sure. I, I, I don't remember this. This this is, and you know, I mean, it's been many years. So let me get this right. So... Because you didn't play a winter sport at stream, whether that was rugby, yep. soccer, basketball, you were asked to leave. Is that correct? Yeah, but that was probably just part of that. That's my memory of it. The other memories that I have is that I was a little shitted at school. Um, I was always getting up to mischief. And part of that was just me trying to uh, rebel against the decision that my parents had made. And, and, and the Simpats curriculum or any curriculum back then didn't really fit with me. Uh, all I wanted to do was go and hang out with my cousins at St. Bernard. So, um, you know, that, that's the schooling side. The other side of it was I made great mates at St. Pat's. And you probably know me as an all-rounder that got into many, many circles. Um, like to think exactly. that I was a bit of a grey a gray man um, around the place. But I was always unhappy with not being, um, you know, with those St. Bernard boys. But that that's sort of outside of school so that that's the part of me that was outside of school where as a Tokelauan every weekend we are involved at the community side of things and I'd always be the old oh there goes um you know the the rich Tokelauan or there goes uh you know the cousin that doesn't go to St Bernard so um they, they were some of my challenges so um you know I, I was always getting up to mischief uh, always pulling pranks on teachers um, and always not turning in assignments, um, not doing exams. You know, uh, I think fifth form exam, I got 44 in mathematics, but I'd walked out in 15 minutes. So I, I walked out as soon as we were allowed to walk out. And I remember the surprised look on everyone's faces as I walked out. So I just wasn't a model, being a model student, um, a good student that just made really poor choices. Oh, look, and look, there's a lot of, um, a lot of us a lot of the guys watching that that will feel um the same mm. so you're not alone you're not alone yeah. this i mean boy how many times have i said in these interviews uh, some of the lovely wonderful teachers that we had were so tolerant you know yeah. i mean I, I can vividly remember practically falling asleep 
you know, in some classes and, and the fact that we got away with that sort of stuff and, you know, I, I, I just shake my head and I'm guilty, you know, um, it's just amazing. It just amazes me some of the, the, the tolerance that some of those, you know, teachers had for us. Yeah, I do. like I hear it in those videos, you know, everyone was a little um, too head. Um, but, you know, that that was the era as well. And um, and look, we, we live with those memories. Uh, absolutely no regrets. Uh, for what I did in St. Pat's and the mates that I made there where they'll, they'll be lifelong even though we haven't stayed connected, um, most of us, um, through, you know, this project that you've got going on and through Sarge's uh, work with the foundation. It's been amazing just to see where everyone is at and, and, and hear those stories of mischief as well, <laughs> especially in The Messenger. Well, 100%. Now, let's yeah. talk army and army life. Um I'm excited because, you know, there's, there's always been a big service side to me, um, family members in the Army. And tell us your story. Mm -hmm. how, how did it go and when did it start and where did it take you? Oh, wow. Um, I got off the train station at Ava and I was walking to go and visit an auntie. I, I just wanted to go and visit her. Um, you know, I, I was, I'm a very strong on family. And, um, and I was walking down, I, I think it's William Street. And Ava on the, on my way to Batoni, on my way to um, Jackson Street in Batoni. And I walked past this little um, street, which was called Paddy Street in Batoni. And, um, and I just see these guns, um, artillery guns that were laid out in the car park. And I thought, oh, this is interesting. So uh, being the mischief guy that I was, um, walked in and a, a big moldy bloke um, pulls me over and he says, oh, you're here to sign up? And I said, oh, I just curious as to what's going on but um he, he actually took me in scheduled me an interview um recruited me on the spot um I, I really didn't know what I was getting into but absolutely no regrets about walking into Paddy Street that day and I feel like it was a calling because I was really looking for something to do um you know after the um while working at the post I uh, started working at the warehouse as a storeman um warehouse um, in Upper Hutt and uh, the department store and then I really didn't know what I was you know, going to do with my life. So it was just one of those fortunate scenarios, um, you know, rocking in and, and signing up. And um, I remember doing my, um, my entry test and um, the psychometric test. They were like, oh, you're, you're one of those clever coconuts, aren't you? And, and I often <laughs> think, well, mum and dad did send me to St. Pat's Stream. So maybe I just had a leg up on all the other coconuts, um, you know. So yeah, that was sort of my the beginning of my journey. Um, September '93, I went and did my intake, and um, you know most of you would have been sitting your seven form exams then. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, and then um, yeah, that was me and the artillery. Now that that was territorial force to start off with, um, but my journey just elevated from there with the army. Wow. And so at what stage did you enter the regular army full-time? Um, so I, I think it was 97, uh, we got a letter, or well, the unit got a letter from um, Headquarters Defence, Bacon Street in Wellington. Um, and that was asking why I was doing 250 days plus a year. Um, as a territorial force, you're only... Um, you're only you know, supposed to be doing like 20 days a year plus the annual field exercise. But um, I was kicking out about 250 days a year that year. And, um, and that's just because I was everywhere and wanted to do everything. And I was instructing uh, the Army Depot in Wairu. I was um, taking some of the basic trainings in Trenton. So um, I decided in 99 that I would go regular force. Um, and that was um, to start off with. Uh, with one battalion, Royal New Zealand Infantry Regiment. Um, although I held my uh, rank um, as artillery, it was sort of like a seconded posting to Alpha Company there uh, whilst they were prepping for East Timor. And then on return from East Timor in 2000, uh, 2001, I decided that um, I would stay regular force, but with my home unit, which was 16th Field Regiment. Fantastic. So I think we mentioned, um, look, look, about 12 years in total. Can you g give us some of the countries or operations that you um, went on? Um, look, Timor was the only operations I went on. Um, but as um, an FO signaller, my, um, my captain travelled everywhere. 
And of course, when he traveled everywhere, we would have to travel with him. So Singapore was one of those um, frequent uh, travel places, um, working with them in their artillery. Um, all, all over the country in the most remote places, we had cheesed every um, secret dive spot there was. Um, <laughs> but Australia was the main place that we had come over to. So around, all around Northern Territory, Western Australia, South Australia, if there's a patch of desert, we can be there in a in a you know in a helicopter ride. So um, yeah, Club Nouveau um, around the Pacific. There are a few places around the Pacific. You know, would be for maybe a day or two, um, but they weren't in the operations. They were just for some reason Captain Parker would just be dragging us around because we we hold his radios for him. Wow. Well, we spoke to Dan Walker the other day, another day boy who. Um, of mm. course, he, he served in the in the in the navy here, and, and yep. now we're talking to you in the army. So, look again, man. Thanks for your service. Now, tell us about your job, your current job. So, what what do you do now, Seth? Oh, like now I'm uh, I work in correction. Um, I am a, a screw or I'm a prison a custodial officer. Um, that's only a new venture that I've sort of tapped into, wanting to get back into service. Prior to that, I was working in the corporate world, and um, like a lot of the guys, I was sort of in sales. Um, account management, but mainly in project management with MBN and um, the largest telco over here. Um, so a bit tired of that, wanted to move into serving the community. So I, I babysit criminals, um, you know, for 12 hours. Wow. Work. Now, I know you're coming from, uh, you're beaming in from Aussie. So well, whereabouts in Australia are you and what prison? Do you work at a particular prison? Which one are you at? Oh, yeah, so I've, I've just moved down from the Townsville Correctional Centre. Uh, so there's a few prisons up there um, and um, work camps. Um, so uh, I, I was up there for a year and I've just moved down now to the Raman Centre um, here in Brisbane, um, out at the Waco Precinct. But um, no, I can work a numerous number of prisons. Um, around the southeast Queensland corner, but I live in um, south side of Brisbane at the moment, or southwest, um, not too far from work. So, yeah, I won't give too much away there because it's sort of like, a, as you know, it's a, try and keep as private as you can for, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, to eliminate or minimise any risks. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Well, I know Paddy Ford will be watching this, and uh, I, he did a stint here um, as a corrections officer, um, uh, as he mentioned in in his video. So again, man, another um, another tough job, but you know, we just want you to, to um, well, we admire what you're doing, man, and, and keep safe when you're doing that job, eh? Thanks, brother. Right, talk about Fano. Are you married, and do you have children? And if so, please introduce them to us. Yeah, I say I'm, I say I'm married. Um, Heather and I have been together for 21 years, uh, just under 21 years. Um, I uh, I became a young dad real early. Um, before I turned 18, I had my first child, um, and I've had six since. So seven daughters. That's my brood. Um, nice Pacific Island family, nice and large. Um, Heather and I have four, and then I have uh, three previous. So they range from the ages of 27 all the way down to seven. Oh, hey, wow, all girls. <laughs> all girls, yeah. Yeah. Wow. So I've got a netball team there. Yeah, yeah, you certainly have. And yes, yes, Mr. You did start early, but then, then that makes you a uh, a young dad too. You yeah, I was you. a very young dad and um, you know, really naive back then. But I'm so grateful for the life that I've had with my uh, with my older girls. So um, are you a quarter yet? Yeah, I am actually. I've got um, two. Hey, you um, might be our my, first. You might yeah. be our first grandfather. <laughs> yeah, everyone else is keeping it low. Uh, you know, keeping it under the radar. I'm sure there's a few boys out there that have, um, you know, earned their grey hairs. Hey, you're looking good for a, uh, a a grandfather, mate. Just quietly. Yeah, thank you. Far out. Oh, that's awesome. See, you got a big family, which is which is uh, wonderful. Um, we just touched on we 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 sort of um where you're living at the moment. Now look, let's talk about get back to Silver Stream as we're sort of ending the near heading towards the end of our interview. Now look, um memories or particular memory or or memories that you have that you've held for all this time that you sort of think of every now and then. Have you got something that you can share with us of your time at Silver Stream that may be personal to you that you can share with the rest of the guys? 
Oh, look, I, I always reflect back to um, stream whenever, you know, I, I hit a milestone or I'm, I'm in a moment in my life. And I remember um, I've been in so many helicopters, fight so many weapon systems. And, and each time, um, you know, I'm in those moments, I think of, you know, Miss Yon Garius's science class and, and how dark it was. Or I think of Miss Wally, um, you know, she, she took us through Philip Claremont and uh, Max Beckman with some artists, um, expressionists that she wanted us to do in art. Or... I think of um, the horticulture trip that we had with Mrs. Hicks and we went down to her house um, down um, near Akatarawa, uh, Birchville. Um, you know, I think of all these little moments. Um, every time I'm, I'm in a situation where I feel grateful, I reflect back to, um, to my, some, some of those moments in stream. And, um, you know, Mr. Brown uh, took us through Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. So when I hear that on the radio, I just think... Um, of Mr. Brown's music classes. So it's little things like that. Obviously there's the big ones, there's King and not winning any uh, swimming sports. <laughs> there's the McKivity Shield, um, <laughs> Greg Mocker. You know, I remember, you know, I did a PB in my, in Javelin um, at training. We had a um, training coach, I think it was Mr. Thompson. He um, had a son and a daughter at Hedatonga College. So he was from outside of the community, but came to um, coach us and I remember um, throwing the javelin and doing a PBA training and then Greg Mocker comes along and, and beats it by like five meters and and I'm huffing and puffing there but it just made me want it to be better you know it made me want to um, it made me want to do a whole lot more and um, you know so the athletics Chris Suey, Hayden Whippich, um, watching those guys sprint, um, James Curry, um, you know Shane O'Reilly I remember um, you know he would try and throw everything, including the high jump mat. Uh, I remember the B-Boys, um, you know, they used to do that, you know, spirit hands thing and throw everyone over the rugby post. Um, you know, being in the weights room with Campbell Clark, getting suspended with Tomatea Dennison for our silly haircut, um, and then having to do multi correspondence up uh, above the gymnasium, one of the common rooms. So a whole lot of, lot of little things. And I'm sure everyone's got those sort of little moments that, when they're in a moment of their life where they feel blessed or they feel down, they just reflect back on uh, on some pats and, um, you know, some of those little moments that we had at our school. Wow. Yeah, couldn't <laughs> you've really uh, you've nailed it. You've captured it beautifully. Um, now, you mentioned um, Campbell Clark, who, who I remember um, uh, very well. Um, I'm not sure. Look, do you keep in touch with him or do you keep in touch with anyone from, from our year? Um, everyone's a little bit, you know, busy and, you know, me included. So I'm a little bit guilty of maybe not doing enough to get back home to see everyone physically, but, um, I'm always stalking you guys. Um, you know, as you know, I'm, I'm always liking your posts and it's the same with everyone else. You know, I know that David Handerside's is just down the road in um, New South Wales. Um, Tom and Ted Dennison's up in the air. So, you know, I, I plan to like catch up with him. Um, what's worth I haven't spoken to or Simon, you know, and these are all like my sort of immediate circle. Um, you know, I haven't really caught up with him. Last I caught up with him, I was living in Waifatu there in Lower Hutt. And that was years, um, years ago, maybe 12 years ago. So I haven't really caught up with anyone um, in in my immediate year group. Um, and that's probably just because I've been plodding along doing my own thing, but I always think of you it's like all the time. You are always the blue and white, um, you know, the school motto, the, the haka, no matter how bad it was, <laughs> um, bad. you know, um, the extremely awesome, you know, catchphrases, but they are always on my mind. So um, let's just say that I've caught up with you, all of you guys in spirit. Yeah, absolutely. Well said, mate. Well said. Well, my friend, um, look, really enjoyed um, talking to you tonight. You've got that wonderful um, tone about you, which is still the same, still the same that I remember from, from school. And it's probably no surprise that your younger brother went on to broadcasting and did very well here uh, in, in, in New Zealand. You've, 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 just, you've got that beautiful um, uh, tokoloan voice. Um, now, we're going to send this video out to the guys tonight. Have you got a special message or maybe you want to send out to the guys that will be watching this series? Oh, look, it really, it's just, look, I love you all. That, that's bottom line. Um, you know, from the bottom of my heart, absolutely love you all. Whether you have posted a video or not, 
Um, you know, we're, we're all thinking of you. We're all, you, you, you may just be a faded memory, but like rekindle that memory, um, whether it's posting a video or whether it's uh, connecting to an old friend from St. Pat's on, on social media, um, just get out there and connect. Um, I feel quite, I've got quite strong ties with everyone. I, I was an all rounder. So um, even though my name's been mentioned, probably because people can't pronounce it, I know that they'll probably watch this video and go, oh, that guy. Yeah, yeah I remember that guy. He used, to, <laughs> he used to do the old splice, you know. And um, yeah, so there's a few guys out there. Um, I know, um, I'll probably go back, let's go back to mental health. Um, in the environment that I work in, I'm always concerned for other people's health and well-being. So for those who haven't posted a video, there's no rush. There's no need to, but stay connected and um, and know that we're all vulnerable. So if you, if you want someone to chat to, oh, Uncle Seth's always here. And, um, you know, you can reach out by other means other than posting a video. We'll get to that later. Eh? There's plenty of time for that. Absolutely. And what a wonderful um, way to end our catch up with our brother, Sedu Inalayo. Now, a man of service, uh, proven. And again, Sedu, thank you so much for um, serving our country, for serving Australia now. Um, for our brothers and sisters over there. And it was just, bro, just wonderful to catch up with you. Stay safe until we meet again. Take care. Yeah, aloha, Tony. Thanks, huge. Kia ora, bro.